Hello and welcome back to the Wizards Arena, my fellow Planeswalkers. And we will be doing our sixth video on Zendikar Ryzen. This is continuing on with our standard view of the set. There will be a thing later on for Commanders. Our scale is 1 to 10, 1 being terrible, and 10 is like format warping, game defining changes. So we're starting off with a red, a white, and a colorless 3 3 legendary core warrior. And he says, whenever you attack with a a player with one or more equipped creatures, draw a card. And you can spend a white, and you may unattach an equipment from a dude to put on a, a creature. Tap that creature, and it gains indestructible until end of turn. So, you get to, you know, sort of kind of cranial plate and stuff around. Interesting, um... It's nice having a red-white mechanic that doesn't make you discard then draw. Really like it, but in standard, it's not going to see much play. So on a scale of 1 to 10, sadly, we have to give them only a 3. He's okay. Intriguing, but... Yeah, warriors are going to be a thing, but they need their red-white plan to do a thing. Moving on. Next up. We got a black-green colorless zero-zero Hydra Horror. And this is a battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. Whenever another creature you control dies, if it had a plus one plus one counter on it, put a plus one plus one counter on him. And whenever he dies, make an XX black and green Hydra creature token where its power and toughness of X is the number of plus one plus one counters that was on him. So if he's like a 4 4 and he dies, then he's a 4 4. Oops. I like it. It's neat. They're doing a lot of this stuff with plus one plus one counters in this set. It's a sub theme. Um, solid. No black green dual land though. I mean, you could do Pokeros Hydra Tri Tribal if you wanted to. If you're really bored. Um, but this, I feel, I mean, it does replace itself, which helps it a lot. And that bumps it up from a four to like a six. So that's where he stands. He's okay. You know. Because at least you're getting a th two three threes for three mana. Yeah, could be worse. Our next card is Kaza the Royal Chaser. For a blue and a red, you have a flying hasted one two. And you can tap it the next instant or sorcery you cast this turn costs X less to cast where X is the number of wizards you control. As the ability resolves. So. She's interested in the fact that she's. Flying and hasted. Little chick. Um, but. In terms of standard. She's not going to be doing too much. She's a little bit above dumpster. Because she's got flying and haste. But aside from that. Her ability's neat, but I just don't think it's going to see much usage. You're going to be doing other things with a spell slinger deck besides running her. Lavana is back as the shield of the sea gate. Colors a white and a blue for a 3 3 flyer. And at the beginning of your combat on your turn, if you have a full party, Choose target non-land permanent opponent controls. Until your next turn, it can't attack or block or activate its abilities. So with a full party, that's really sweet. You just shut off one of their things for a full turn. But 
that's pretty terrible. Her saving grace is um, you can sacrifice her and you can choose hexproof or indestructible and creatures you control gain that ability till end of turn. So she's an upgraded selfless spirit and selfless spirits are quite a bit of standard play. So she's way better I feel than selfless spirit was. And her, if party ever gets to do a thing, then maybe this paragraph will be relevant. But there are some white, blue flying decks running around a little bit now in standard. So, because of that, I guess think they're going to be jamming her in it. But it's a special deck type. So, she is a 7. She'd be higher if she was mono white. Because then, like... Angel theme decks could run her. White aggro could run her. I don't think they want to stretch into white blue. It's just not a good idea. Okay, our next card up for review is Nahiri, Heir of the Ancients. Two colors, a red and a white, for a four, for a four loyalty walker. You can plus one or to make a 1-1 one, one white core warrior creature token. And then you may attach your equipment to it. And then you can minus two and look at the top six cards of your library and reveal warrior or equipment card from them. And put it on the back, put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom in a random order again. Okay, so we get to go dig and find a thing. Or you can do your ultimate quasi thing right as she drops for minus three she deals damage to target creature or walker equal to twice the number of equipment you control so if you got two equipments out you do four or you do if you have three you do six so it's pretty reasonable especially since she digs for equipment also she digs for the red white legend that overturns six um, so that's a thing. She's pretty cool, but sorry, no red, white, dual lands. So again, that holds it back a little bit, not a lot. Still think she'll see play maybe in a Jessica show or something. So she's a six. Like, I really like her. She's got a lot of flexibility. But moving on. Our next one is Nissa of Shadowed Bogs. Two, a black and a green for four. Loyalty Planeswalker. Her first ability is Landfall. Oh, okay. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a loyalty counter on her. Oh, so you mean if I wait to turn five, I can resolve her, play a land, put her up to five, and ultimate her on the first turn? Hell yeah. Well, let's see here. Before we get there, she can be plus one to untap target land you control. You can have it become a 3-3 three, three elemental creature with haste and menace until end of turn, and it's still a land. So unlike the previous Nyssa, you don't get to put Vigilance on it. And the effect ends. So thank goodness. Um, her minus 5 is you put a creature card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of lands you control onto the battlefield from your hand or graveyard with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. That is really sweet. So... If I have five lands out when I resolve her, I mean four lands, I resolve her, play a land, have five lands now, minus five her, put something five CMC into play with two counters on it. That is a deal. I like her a lot, but again, no black green duel, so I think that's going to keep her back a little bit. Um, so she suffers a little bit from that. So she's only a five. But I got a feeling when we do get the black green duel, she'll tick up in 
usage just because of how good she is. Um, I don't know why we didn't get an even land split or all enemies or all allies. I just don't get the reasoning. Our next card is Omnath, Locus of Creation. Red, green, white, and blue. See? Red, green, white, blue. Kind of white. Yeah. When he comes into play, draw a card. Landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control for the first time, gain four life. Um, if it's the second time, add white, green, blue, red to your pool. Well, that's what sounds sweet as heck. If it's the third time, Omnath deals four damage to each opponent and each planeswalker you don't control. Well, that's pretty sick. Huh. Okay, I talked it over with several people. We thought about it long and hard. Boom. He's just the best in the set. Best card there is in terms of, you know, for standard. With the tri-lands, with the duels we do have, he's going to get played. And he's going to get played a lot, I feel. Four colors does seem tough, but the Trilands really help you. You also have temples too if you are desperate. Fable passages. So, and with the Fable passage, you get to do shenanigans of like playing the Fabled, cracking it. So, like, even just doing that, you get to gain four life and add four mana. Like, okay, that sounds awesome. So, he's really good. There's definitely going to be a deck run around with him in it. Um, he might... Eventually, I feel like after things calm down a little bit, he probably will slide back to a 9. But right out of the gates, he's going to be a 10. So that's the best card we think in the set. Let's move on to the next card. Orha, Sky Cleaver, Hip for Front. Two, a white and a black for a 3-3 three, three lifelinker. When him or another cleric you control dies, return target cleric with lesser CMC from your graveyard back to the battlefield. Because if we made it less than or equal to, he would be busted. Um, he's really good. If a cleric deck exists. He's going to be the guy that makes it really go. So, I, mean, I think a Clara deck will happen to some degree. Like, people will try it out. So, he's going to get used. I think he'll be... I mean, he's going to see play. So, we'll give him a 7. Because the deck will be played. It's just a question of how good the deck shakes out. Seems like it's going to be pretty solid. Clerics and rogues are like the best thing in the overall in the set. And I think next in Vikings we're going to get Warrior Cleric. And then like the Harry Potter world we're going to get like clerics, rogues, and wizards. And then Forgotten Realms we're going to get like everything. So let's move on to our next card. Phallix with the World Sculptor. Four, a red and a green. When he comes into play, create a zero, one green plant token for each basic land you control. Kind of interesting with a ton of non-basic lands running around, so there's not going to be a ton of dudes. And then, landfall, whenever land and dispatch are under control, put four plus one plus one counters on one plant. So instead of going wide, you're going high to fight the big Zen, uh, the big things from Ikoria. Pretty interesting. Um, and then if you do like things like um, mutate underneath a plant token to give some abilities and then put tokens on it, you can do weird things. But I just don't think it's 
going to see that much play. You know, because landfall, you're going to be low to the ground. So, he's neat, but he's just like drawn out of that. It's too little. So, he's getting a three. Because the deck, he's not better than the red green landfall guy we had before when the last time we were here. So, that's why he's so low. Our next person is Veros, the Split Curtain. X, a green, and a blue. Enters the battlefield with plus one, plus one counters on it. If each mana is spent to cast it. So if you spend two mana, he comes in with four plus one, plus one counters. Pretty interesting way to do it. Whenever you cast a kick spell, you remove two plus one, plus one counters from him. If you do copy that spell, if you choose... And you can choose, of course, the new targets, as always. Um, if you copy a permanent, make a token. So this does let you copy permanents. Which is kind of cool. Um, problem is... There's... Not... Like... I just... There's... The big problem is, is there's not much, like, I don't feel like there's much really good kicker stuff. You're going to have to build around, like, blue, green, black, or blue, green, red, I feel, to maximize his value. It seems like he's just not able to do enough, like, you know. I mean, he's doing... It seems like a lot of the legends have kind of, like, tried to hold back in this set, except for Omnath. So, he's getting a 4. Very cool ability, especially since it counts the 2 here. Um, but, he's just being held back a smidge. From being 6, 7, something like that. Our next person is Rajon, Impactful Earth. Two colors, a green and a white for a legendary creature. Elemental pick. 4-4 four, four picky. When he enters the battlefield, search for a basic force and a basic planes card. Reveal them and put them in hand. Players can't pay life or sacrifice non-land permanents to cast spells or activate abilities. So he's a very interesting hate bear. He fetches you up two lands um, to make sure landfall keeps occurring. Um, but I don't think you'll be running him in the landfall deck because he costs four and your landfall is probably going to be green red anyhow. Um, so I think he's better than the serpent we just saw. I could see him in sideboards, maybe a little deck based around him. Um, so he's going to get a six. He's just a little more versatile than the previous guy, but not crazy more versatile. Um, but if certain if certain things start getting out of hand, he's there. But I think you'll even get run besides that. I mean, 4-4 four, four, for 4 to fetch 2 lands and make it so they can't play certain things is pretty good. The next card up is Varsa, Thief of Heartbeats. Oh boy. All the words. All the words. 4, a black, a red... This spell costs one less to cast for each creature in your party. I'm assuming when you're at six, that this means he's going to cost two colorless in a black and a red, so it's four. So that's pretty cool. He has flying, death touch, and haste. Other creatures you control have death touch, and whenever a creature with death touch deals combat damage to a walker, kill it. 
That is cool. Unfortunately, I don't think Black Red is going to be aggro is going to be a thing yet because we don't have the Black Red duel. I feel like a broken record here, but the way they split up the dual lands, there's just certain strategies that aren't going to be good. He's a really good rogue, but I think if rogue is going to be a thing, that's going to be black blue because we've got the dual land. Um, we don't have allied tri lands, we have enemy ones, so. Um, that's not going to be like a black, red, white one. <laughs> you know, like no martyr. Like, I just don't see it. So, unless there's a party of white, black, red. But I just don't see that either. So, sadly, because of all those things holding him down, we're going to have to give him... A five. He's behind a pig. He has potential to be really good, but the, it's just, and he's got lots of keywords, and there's a snake from last time, but he's, he's just hurting in some areas. I mean, even if, if party is not a thing, then he's really hurting. So if party's a thing, he's a five. If no party, he won't be played at all. I think he just has to wait around to Vikings to do anything. And hopefully people won't forget he exists. Our next guy is Zenith San the Trickster. Okay, he's a merfolk rogue for three, a blue, and a black legendary creature with flash. Spend two, a blue, and a black. Return an unblocked attack and rogue you control to own his hand and put him into play. From your hand, onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. When he deals combat damage to a player, you may put target permanent card from the player's yard onto the battlefield under your control. Okay. So, for four mana, you get a 4-4 four, four that steals something from their yard. And there's the black blue companion. That you can run in your deck that makes some mill stuff into the yard. There's also the new blue mill spell. Rogue seems like a strong archetype. Blue black does have the duels. So I feel like of all the legends we've seen besides Omnath, he's gonna be played more than the other ones. But not much more. So he's a six. I want to maybe bump him up to a 7. But. It's just how good will the rogue deck be. Because it's kind of hard to gauge. Because we're losing a lot of sets. And then. Only a little bit is coming in. And. It's just hard to tell. So that's where we stand with him. Our next card is an uncommon every set we've had for like the last like th three four years has had one of each color uncommon we're only going to go over the cream of the crop here i'm not going to talk about the junk um so we'll start with spoils of venture for a white and a blue for an instant this spell costs one less for each member of your party to cast. Gain three life, draw three cards. Okay, so we're going to try to accessory recall ourselves and gain three life. Spells like this I've been valuing at having two members in your party. And with two members, this costs four. Now, inspirations we've had before, you know... And this is better than that. Titans was five to draw three. So if you got the two members out, it's four mana to draw three, gain three. So it's cheaper. So it's a really good uncommon. Really like it a lot. Um, so if parties are going to do a thing, I feel like this is going to be in all the party decks. Times four. 
It's just really good. Um, especially if you get a party assembled by turn four, we'll say. And you can play for three mana. That's really, that's really, really good. So for an uncommon, maybe I might remind you, uncommon, this is a 7. It's a really good uncommon. If a deck exists for party, this is going to be a major part of it. You're going to build around it. So that's why it's so high. Moving on to our next card. And now we jump to blue-black. Another rogue. This is one of the other reasons why I think rogues will be a thing. He's a flash, flying, 1-3 for you know, blue and a black. As long as your opponent has 8 or more cards in their yard, rogues you have get plus 1, plus 0. Oh. Whenever one or more rogues attack, you get to mill your opponent for 2. Well, we got the blue spell to cost 2 that mills, so seems pretty good to me. So, I think a rogue that's existing in the format. So for an uncommon in the rogue deck, I'm going to give it a six. I think the rogue deck is going to exist. I think this is going to be a decent part of it. I could be wrong that the rogue deck could be just junk. We'll probably be playing a rogue deck next weekend on the channel. And we'll see how it rolls out. Our next card is the Red Green Brushfire Elemental. So 1-1 one, one for Hasted. Can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. And if you play a land this turn, it gets plus 2, plus 2, 10 to turn. I think it's going to end up in the Landfall deck. You're just going to play every Landfall creature you can. That's red and green. That costs like three or less mana, and you're just going to try to run over them like crazy. And playing cultivates and stuff like that, fetch lands of like Fable Passage and such. So, this is going to be a piece of that deck. It might not be played by times four, but it's going to be in there, at least two of it. So, that gets a five because of that. Now, mind you, this is again an uncommon. A five year is not the same as for a rare. It's a really solid uncommon. Our next card is Clerics of Life Bond. A right to the enemy colors. A white black for 2 2 vampire cleric. Whenever another cleric enters the battlefield under your control, gain one life. Whenever you gain life for the first time only, Put a plus one, plus one counter on him. If cleric decks are going to be a thing, he's going to get played. And I feel like clerics are going to be the second most played deck. I think rogues are going to be the biggest one to come out of this set. Right along with Omnath. Those are the three decks I think we're going to get. And party's going to be tried and kind of like fail. So this guy here, um, he is going to be a five. We're only going to go over the really cool uncommons. Again, we skipped King Wade for that reason. He seems pretty solid. You know, looking forward to trying clerics also out, seeing how they do. Our next card is Kargan's War Leader. Colorless, red, and a white. Other warriors you control get plus one, plus one. He's a three, three for three. Okay. So, if a warrior deck does exist, you got Nahiri, you got him, you're talking about something here, you know, you got pieces. The warrior deck does exist. He's really going to be a central part of it. I'm going to give him a 5. Because I'm not sure if there's enough stuff to make the warrior deck go. We've got the war leader from the previous set. I mean not previous set. From my Coria. Coria the previous set. Um, 
So, could be very good, could be too short, not enough to cut the cake. So he gets a five. I'm going to be interested to try him out too. Again, most of these cards are decks I'm going to probably build and try out on the stream. Our next one is nothing. That's the end, folks. All the other gold cards stink. But there was at least four uncommons to talk about. Or five, something like that. Ivan Draymo with a Wizards Arena. Reviewing Standard. Um, please like, share, or subscribe. Comment below. And please, if you're not subscribed to the channel, give us a subscription. Helps us out a lot. Trying to grow our fan base. And if there's anything you want to see me play in the first weekend, let me know. I got rogues, warriors, clerics all queued up along with party. So, until our next video where we'll finish out with artifacts and lands, I'll see you later. Have a great day.